The protagonist of the tale is Choi, an unfortunate yet a genius man who attempted suicide early in life and is now being punished by death itself. At the beginning, we see Choi, who is on his way to his first job interview, and then he receives a call from his girlfriend Jisoo. She gives him her best wishes for a successful early job interview, which boosts his confidence. However, a man abruptly bumps into him, and after that, a car hits him, and he flees in the direction of Choi. Witnessing this horrible accident, Choi experiences trauma, which makes it difficult for him to concentrate during his interview which leads to his rejection. After seven years, Choi is still unable to secure a well-paying career and is forced to take on several part-time jobs in order to pay off his education loans. Choi finds himself compelled to labor as a slave, while his buddies are enjoying life to the fullest. Choi has been trying for the past seven years to get a legitimate, high-paying job, but he hasn't been able to pass the interviews. He goes to the Taekong Corporation for another interview, where he encounters Taeyu, the guy who will ruin his life. He expresses interest in Choi's resume, however, he couldn't get selected. Feeling disheartened by this, he visits Jisoo, his lover, only to discover her with another man. The man, who is her uncle, gives her flowers and departs, then she notices Choi there. He inquires as to whether she was out on a date with that man, she tries to convince him it's not like that. However, Choi is sad knowing she deserves someone better, he breaks up with her, asking her to move on with her life, because he is exhausted and feels that he has become a burden on Jisoo. Upon returning to his apartment he discovers that he has been expelled from his rented apartment, this makes him even more sad. Choi makes the hard decision to take his own life. However, he also claims that he has no fear of dying and views it as a way to put an end to his misery in an attempt to look down upon death, and jumps off of the building as his mother tries to call him. But then he wakes up and finds himself on an airplane, but when he looks at his reflection on the tablet, he finds he's in another man's body, and notices a woman next to him, she's death, and she is upset because of his attitude towards her, calling death nothing but a way to escape from his suffering. Because of this, she has decided to punish him, and take away the privilege of dying only once, she informs him that she's going to make him experience death twelve times and his soul will be entering the bodies of people facing inevitable deaths. However, if he manages to avoid their imminent death, then he'll get to live their entire lifetime. And death leaves from there. And afterwards, suddenly an orb appears right in front of him. This orb contains the original body owner's memory and abilities. It gets inside of his head and he gets to know that this guy is the second son and current CEO of Taekong Company. Seeing his wealth and status, Choi decides to carry on living, however, suddenly one of the engines catches fire and the plane starts to go down. He tries to save himself but then the plane blasts, and he brutally gets burnt leading to his death, afterwards he wakes up in hell. Where death informs him he has eleven more deaths to experience. He asks why she has bullets on the table. Death says that she will be using these bullets to kill and send him to another body. And also informs him that if he fails to avoid any death then he'll be sent to hell. But she also tells him that if he manages to avoid the inevitable deaths of any of these eleven lives, then he may avoid going to hell. Choi decides to survive however he can so that he won't end up in hell. Then death shoots him, and he begins to fall down and gets inside the body of an extreme sports maniac, who has taken a challenge to dive without a parachute and land on a safety net installed on the ground and if he succeeds, he'll get $2.2 million in cash, as he gets the ability and memories of this guy, Choi becomes confident and greedy he decides to complete the challenge. He finds the safety net below and heads towards it as everyone watches him over the live stream. He's heading towards the ground at a very high speed, however, he misses the net and lands on ground and dies an instant death. And goes back to death, he cries telling her his story how life has been so cruel to him. But death doesn't care since he has done something that puts him on the bad character list. Then she shoots him again and he wakes up inside the body of a high school kid and then he notices a guy laughing over the death of the sky drivers. He moves forward to slap him but suddenly he gets his memories back. His name is Hiksu. He doesn't have a father and his mother if working tirelessly to support the family. He wants to study hard, but he's being bullied at school and was about to kill himself today. However, Choi is happy since he won't have to struggle to survive and starts laughing out loud. Jin Sang slaps him for laughing. However, Choi isn't weak like Hiksu. As he's leaving, Choi grabs the chair and hits him with it and starts beating them. But then suddenly a big guy comes and throws him away. His name is Nate. Choi starts fighting him. However, he gets overwhelmed by his size. And then they start beating him. Then Nate tries to stop Jin Sang but he suddenly slaps Nate, asking him to stay out of this. Later, he goes to Hiksu's house and gets a message from Jin Sang, 
threatening him to bring some money to school tomorrow. However, he can't live like this, so he thinks about having a discussion with Nate. The next day, Choi asks him why a big guy like him is afraid of ginseng. Nate says that he isn't afraid of ginseng but his allies, and a very strong one at that, who is a gang leader in that area. Choi asks him to stay out of their fight, and he will deal with ginseng. Later, at the cafeteria, as Choi is having lunch, Jin Sang comes and shoves his face into the lunchbox. This enrages him and he spills the food onto his head. And swiftly walks away from there. Jin Sang gets angry. He orders his punks to catch him. However, Nate ignores and declines to follow his orders. Afterwards, Jin Sang goes to seek help from the gang leader Song. He quickly comes inside the class and asks Nate why he is bullying Jin Sang. Nate tells him and it's not him but the guy sitting on the bench. Song can't believe that he called them to beat up a small kid. Song warns Jin Sang not to come to him asking for help again and leaves from there. Choi is happy that he finally managed to avoid the certain death and the threat from Hiksu's life. Now he plans to carry on living. However, as he is heading back home, a truck comes towards him, but luckily the driver stops the truck on time and scolds him. Then suddenly he hears Jin Sang's voice and gets hit with a brick on his head. He falls down as he starts to bleed from his head, subsequently. Jin Sang starts to brutally smash his face with the brick. And then Choi wakes up in hell. He isn't happy with death playing unfair with him, even though he managed to save Hiksu from suicide. But eventually got killed in the end. Death gets angry and throws him far away. She accepts that she was having fun watching him suffer. However, there was no involvement of her in his death. He begs her to give him a life he can survive with less difficulty. But she informs him that the difficulty is just going to increase from now on. Death shoots him and he wakes up to find himself tied up to a chair surrounded by a few men in black. They asked him to reveal the location of the money and the girl he took away. As he was about to hit Choi with the hammer, Choi gets the guy's memories. The guy's name is Lee Ju Hun. He's an assassin who had fallen in love with the boss's girlfriend so he took her away with a lot of money. After getting back his memories and abilities, he starts to fight with them like a freaking assassin and manages to run away from there on motorcycle. However, they start chasing after him. Though, with his amazing motorcycle riding skills, Choi manages to save himself from the truck, but he is still being chased by the motorcyclists. He then suddenly gets inside a shopping complex, although he eventually gets cornered by them. However, he sees an elevator and quickly gets inside it, and gets on the rooftop but there is nowhere else to run. However, he then jumps off of the building then lands inside a rooftop swimming pool and survives. Then Choi goes back to the bridge where Lee's girlfriend is awaiting his arrival. She quickly hugs and shows how worried she was. Then suddenly she asks the location of the money. Choi smiles and points the finger towards a random location. Suddenly, she calls his name, and as he turns around, she points a gun at him and shoots him on his head multiple times and he falls down. Choi wakes up and is angry at a sudden turn of life. Seeing him suffer makes death laugh. She calls him a fool for believing that girl even though he knew his life was in danger. But she doesn't know that he actually hid the money somewhere else and lied to that girl. He plans to get the money in his next life and smiles. Death notices his evil smile and shoots him. He wakes up in a prison cell and gets angry as he realizes he won't be able to retrieve the money. Then a cop comes there, who then takes him to his cell. Choi asks one of his cell mates how long he is going to be imprisoned. He tells him that both of them will be released after four days which enlightens him. The guy also requests him to control his temper and not to fight that psychopathic murderer. Then a guy comes there and Choi gets to know it's Jin Sang who is pretending to be a serial killer to boss around his cellmates. However, Choi is angry at him for killing Hiksu, then suddenly, he gets the memory orb. The guy's name is Taesang, he's an MMA fighter in training. But since there's a financial crisis going on in his family, he got an offer from a wealthy man who is Taeyu, to take his hit and run case on his head and they'll pay him a lot of money. He couldn't deny such an opportunity to help his mother with her debt. He hands himself over to the police for Taeyu's hit and run case. However, unlucky for the guy, the woman who was hit ends up dying in the hospital. And he ended up getting two years imprisonment and had to give up his dream to become an MMA fighter. Then he begins to blackmail to U.S. secretary to give him more money or he'll tell everyone they forced a minor to take their case on his head. The secretary threatens to get him killed in prison. Choi realizes that the guy's life in danger. Jin Sang, on the other hand, kept trying to act tough pretending to be dangerous. Choi is tired of him with his nonsense and goes towards Jin Sang and starts beating the shit out of him until he begins to cry and beg for mercy. Choi tells everyone how he's not some psychopathic killer that he's pretending to be but a loser bully who got beaten up by a small kid and later ambushed him from behind and killed him, thus 
landed in jail. Hearing this, the cellmates get enraged and start beating him. The next day, as they're working inside the prison, a guy is secretly planning to kill Taesang. However, Choi manages to dodge the blade and it ends up hitting him instead. The cops take him away, but the other prisoners come forward, informing him that some client has put a price on his head. Taesang begins to think and gets to know that it's the secretary. Then they begin to fight. But since Taesang is an MMA fighter, Choi easily manages to fight all of them at once. Later at night, as everyone asleep, Jin Sang wakes up with malicious intent. He goes inside the bathroom where he begins to make a weapon to kill Tae Sang. However, he arrives there. Despite his wish to see Jin Sang dead, Choi decides to leave him since it will just increase Choi's prison time. Choi tells him that he can see ghosts, and Hee Su's ghost is standing right behind him. He gets scared and faints as he pisses in his pants. The next day, we see Jin Sang has gone crazy. Meanwhile, Tae Sang has been released from the prison he goes to the place where he was killed in his previous life. He takes the boat and goes inside a small house where he has hidden a lot of cash and diamonds worth millions. Afterwards, he gets a call from his mother telling him she misses him a lot and wants to see him. He takes all the money with him and locks half of it inside a public locker. After that, as he was walking down the streets, a man appeared behind him and stabbed him multiple times till he fell down. The man is the father of the woman who died in the car accident. Choi tells him that it wasn't him who killed his daughter but someone else. And he runs away as his cellmate arrives there. At first, he seemed so worried about him until he showed him his real face. He is also a money-hungry person who wants to kill him to get the reward money, and stabs him multiple times then runs away. As Taesang's mother calls him, Choi wakes up in hell, and begins to cry remembering his mother. However, he stands up and goes towards death. Since he needs to go retrieve the money from the locker, he asks her to shoot him already. Death smirks with amusement and shoots him. Choi wakes up inside a restaurant. But this time he has become a small baby and begins to cry thinking about his ten billion one that will be confiscated after four days if he doesn't retrieve it. As he's crying out loud, his mother comes and quickly takes him to her car. However, she's totally crazy and starts shouting at the baby for making her life miserable. As they get home, she throws the baby on the sofa, and the father comes. You must be thinking the father has to be nice at least. Well, he's also a jerk. After getting tired of the baby, the mother picks him up and throws him on the floor and begins to choke him with a pillow. Choi wakes up traumatized and furious at those parents. However, he doesn't have much time and asks her to kill him quickly. She shows her amazement at his eagerness to die that quickly, but she also tells him that he can do whatever he wants but she will intervene if he decides to kill someone. Choi says he will never intend to kill someone. She shoots him and he finds himself standing on the streets. He quickly checks the time on his phone and finds he only has 15 minutes to retrieve the money from the locker. Fortunately, he happens to be standing right in front of the station where the locker is. He quickly runs towards the locker and gets the bag. But then he finds that the guy is actually a model. His name is Jung and is quite famous and rich already. He goes to his palace, where he finds lots of luxurious items. After glancing at the newspaper, he finds that the parents who killed the baby got arrested. Subsequently, he gets a call from his friend inviting him to a VIP party where he gets drunk and meets with the Taekong Company's CEO, Taeyu. The next morning, his brother makes him help out at his coffee shop, where he sees Jisoo there and begins to remember the time he first met her and fell in love with her. Choi gets to know that she comes at the cafe every day to write novels. Choi goes towards her and after giving her the coffee, he tells her that he's a huge fan of her novels and that he wants to tell her a story he made about a guy who kills himself but finds death in the afterlife who punishes him by making him experience death twelve times, and Jisoo takes interest in it. And for this reason, they began to meet each other every day to complete the story. Afterwards, he goes to his mother's house to drop the bag of money to her. Later at night, after writing the story, they head back to home together. While on their way, Choi begins to tell her that the story he's telling her is actually real and he is the protagonist of that story, and he is her boyfriend Choi, she begins to cry in confusion. He reminds her their precious moments when she was there with him during his hard times and never has been ashamed of calling him her boyfriend even in front of her colleagues. Both of them begin to cry, however, a car suddenly hits the two, and Taeyu comes out of the car. After looking at him from up close, Choi begins to remember that he was the reason for his death in all of his previous lives except for Hiksu. Taeyu is surprised to find him alive and begins to choke him with his hands. And both Jisoo and Choi died there. Saddened by the death of his love, Choi starts crying out loud. He decides to kill Taeyu, however, before him, he wants to kill death, and he puts the gun on her head and shoots. Meanwhile, 
Somewhere else, two YouTuber justice maniacs are broadcasting a live stream. They have kidnapped a rapist and plans to brutally kill him. However, a mysterious person appears out of nowhere and takes the criminal with him. He's a painter who uses human blood to create art. He takes a chainsaw and begins to cut his legs as the blood splashes all over the place. During this, after shooting death, he tries to shoot himself but the gun does not work, then he hears death. She laughs at him for believing he can kill death. She reminds him that she's not a normal human but someone that can do abnormal things. Choi gets sad seeing Jisoo as he blames himself for her death. However, death lets him know that she was just destined to die there at that hour, and he just happened to be there to witness her death. Choi wants revenge, and asks to shoot him, she uses the same bullet he shot at her to kill him, and he gets inside the serial killer's body, as he walks around his house and finds unusual paintings, weapons and blood. His memories comes to him, the artist's name is Gyuchio, ever since he was a little boy, he was interested in painting and drawing, but he didn't get much recognition, thus he became distressed, however, one night he came across a suicide which inspired him to make a painting of it, and he earned a lot of money by selling it. Since then he has been hunting down people to kill ruthlessly in order to create his artwork. However, Choi decides to use this demon to kill that demon Taeyu. He decides to stalk him and find an opportunity to kill him, but suddenly, he gets a nosebleed and faints. Later, he gets to know that he has a brain tumor, and he only has one month of time remaining. However, it's enough for him to take his revenge. He starts to think of ways to get his hands on Taeyu. Suddenly, he gets a call from his office receptionist, informing him that Taekang CEO Taeyu is interested in buying one of his paintings and wants to visit the gallery. He quickly goes to his art gallery where he finds Taeyu looking at his biggest painting. He introduces himself to him, and after a very psychopathic discussion between them, Choi thinks of killing him right away, but remembers the words of death that she will be intervene if he decides to kill someone. Since the painting's not for sale, Taeyu leaves from there. However, Choi stops him, offering him to sell the paintings but first asks him his house address. Later that night, Taeyu takes a few drug pills and goes back to his house where he finds Gyuchio. He gets out his car. Choi puts his boots on his car to make him angry. He suddenly slaps Choi. However, he stands up him and spits onto him which makes him even more angry. He grabs a shotgun from his car and shoots at him. But he's wearing the bulletproof jacket and survives. After that he takes him to his art studio. As Taeyu looks around the studio, suddenly, Choi collapses on the floor. And later finds himself tied to the bench. Taeyu arrives there and begins to tell all of his crimes to get even with him. Then he begins to torture him brutally until he dies. And Choi wakes up in hell. Death laughs with amusement after seeing him go through such a terrible death. And calls him lucky since if he tried to kill Taeyu, she would have thrown Choi in hell which would have been even worse. However. Choi begins to laugh like a maniac, giving her hints that it was his plan to get himself brutally killed by him so that he can film him. Choi declares that he will take his revenge no matter what happens to him since God won't punish Taeyu. She shoots him and he goes inside the body of a detective named Ji Hong. When Ji Hong was a child, his father who was a police officer got killed. And he decided to become a police officer too, however, his mother didn't like that and went into depression. Because of his mother, Ji Hong decided to put his life before everybody, which caused him his dignity as a police officer, and everyone started looking down upon him. Afterwards, Choi sees two people fighting and one of them is his previous cellmate Kim, who killed Tae Sang. He goes towards him and starts beating him as everyone makes a video of them, which later goes viral and Ji Hong becomes a hero. Choi decides to go to the art studio to seize the recorded files. Meanwhile, Taeyu is highly intrigued by what he did last night and wants to feel that sensation once again. He asks his secretary if she wants to go out with him somewhere. During this, Choi and Detective Ji Hoon are heading towards the art studio. He gets inside the secret room and starts copying the files into a pen drive as Ji Hoon calls the forensic team. And they begin to analyze the crime scene, and Taeyu arrives there with his secretary, but gets stopped by the cops. Choi isn't surprised since he had anticipated he would come again to satisfy his hunger for blood. However, he lets him go for now. Because of these two cases, Ji Hong has gotten the limelight and a lot of fame. The next morning, Ji Hoon tells him that he saw him copying a few videos in a pen drive and then deleted them. He asks what were those. Ji Hong tells him that he knows the killer, which is Taekang CEO Taeyu. But if he were to hand over those files to the police, they'll be deleted right away because of Taeyu's connections in the police department. 
Then suddenly he sees his mother there. Jihoon tells him that the woman has been summoned here a few times already due to a bag full of money found in her house which belonged to a guy they found dead on the streets. Choi goes to meet his mother and gets to know that she has handed over the money to the police. Later, he leaves a package at his mother's door, leaving a note, telling her to take care of herself. Then as he was leaving, suddenly a man appears in front of him and stabs him. Elsewhere at Taekang House, Taeyu gets to know that his father found out about him killing random people with his car. Taeyu gets angry at him. However, he couldn't kill him, so he takes over a random man's car and takes out his anger on him. Then he goes to a church and talks down upon God, calling himself the real God who decides if someone lives or dies. But suddenly he gets a call from an informer that Ji Hong has a video of him killing Gyuchio. Scared Taeyu calls the police commissioner. However, the commissioner is at the police station handcuffed. And Ji Hong picks up the call. We get to know he survived the attack from earlier. Taeyu asks him to meet at a place where they can talk this thoroughly like gentlemen. However, he isn't ready for it. Ji Hong tells him to come at the police station to meet with him. And takes away the commissioner from there. However, the squad chief gets a call from the general commissioner, asking to send Ji Hong to his office. He goes to meet with the general commissioner and finds Taeyu there. Taeyu offers him money and fame to shut his mouth. But he declines, saying he just wants to see Taeyu dead. And leaves from there. Later that night, Ji Hong is watching the news broadcast of Taeyu getting arrested. However, Taeyu uses the fact that he killed a serial killer to portray himself as a hero, telling everyone that he was kidnapped by Guccio and he had to kill him to put an end to these mercilessly killings. And the news reporter only plays the starting of the clip where Guccio is dragging Taeyu inside his art studio. Because of this, Taeyu not only gets released, but gets a lot of love and praise from the public. Then Ji Hong gets kidnapped. The kidnappers inform Taeyu about it who is on his way to the United States. Later, an emergency alarm goes off and he wakes up. He goes to check the cockpit to find the room empty and the plane is on autopilot. And we get to know that it was pre-planned by Choi. He used all of his previous life's abilities to plan a perfect revenge. Taeyu grabs the parachute and jumps from the plane and manages to safely land on the ground. However, a car suddenly hits him, and the guy who was driving the car is Ji Hong. Meanwhile, Taeyu's video recordings are being broadcasted on the news television as he gets exposed. Choi begins to choke him, but suddenly, death arrives on earth to stop Choi. However, he doesn't stop but suddenly he sees Jisoo's pen on the ground which reminded him that she wanted a happy ending for his story. And he decides to leave him, and death vanishes from there. Then Taeyu stands to attack him, but a sudden breeze of strong air pushes him towards the coming truck. The next day, all of Taeyu's crimes have been exposed to the public and all the higher-ups in the police department are arrested. Meanwhile, Ji Hong goes to meet with Taeyu who is still alive, however, fortunately for us he's in a terrible condition. Ji Hong then goes to thank Jisoo who stopped him from killing that jerk Taeyu which may have landed him in hell. Now, Choi has been continuing to live as Ji Hong waiting for the day he dies as he fights crime. Ji Hoon is at the hospital as he got severely injured. His daughter is sad to see his father like that. Ji Hong takes Ji Hoon's daughter to the cafeteria to cheer her up, but she's still upset because of her father who always gets hurt every time he goes to work. Seeing her sad, Ji Hong promises her that he'll make sure her father won't get hurt from now on and makes a pinky promise with her. The next day as they're chasing a criminal, they corner him on the rooftop of a building, however, he pulls out a pistol from his bag and shoots both of them. Ji Hong remembers his promise to save Ji Hoon, he charges towards the criminal and they both fall down the building and die. He wakes up in hell and death is upset with him for committing suicide. He claims that he did it to save Ji Hoon, death asks who exactly is he to save someone's life, she shoots him and he takes the life of a bagger, and goes to Ji Hong's funeral. When he leaves from there, he notices Ji Hoon crying blaming himself for Ji Hong's death. Choi goes to comfort him. However, Ji Hoon gets angry at him and asks who he is with a loud voice. At this moment, Choi realizes that no matter how many good deeds he did with all those lives, it's all pointless in the end. Then he notices his memory orb. He's tired of this game. He tries to run away from it but falls from the stairs and dies without getting the bagger's memories. Death calls him a fool. Choi is just tired of all this and wants to end the game quickly so death shoots him. And he takes on the life of an office employee who just got fired from his job and his wife divorced him saying he's no longer useful to them. Meanwhile we see Choi who is heading to his interview and we get to know that death has rewinded the time to the very beginning to give Choi another chance. However, 
He doesn't realize that. He rushes towards the road bumping into Choi and later getting hit by Taeyu's car. This is the accident that ruined Choi's life. And gave Taeyu a reason to kill people for his pleasure. Death is just sad and calls him stupid. She gave him a chance to change the destiny of many people all at once but he chose to ignore it. Only if he had decided not to commit suicide, Choi wouldn't have gotten the trauma and would have succeeded the interview, and all the people who have died because of Taeyu including Jisoo would have been alive. However, Choi calls it all useless now. Death shoots him and he finds himself in his house. And that he's inside his mother's body. As he gets back his mother's memories, he begins to realize how cruel he was to leave her all alone just to end his suffering. His mother has worked so hard to see Choi live a happy life. But in return he gave her nothing but pain. The next day, he decides to fulfill her wish to visit a mountain she used to go to when they were younger. However, as he was going back, he suddenly trips and begins to fall down. However, this time he doesn't want to die. The next morning, he finds himself in a hospital. And he realizes how easy it is to kill yourself but how pain it can be to see your loved ones die. Thirty-two years have passed since then. Choi has managed to survive as his mother and has realized the meaning and value of a life. And then slowly he loses his consciousness, and finds himself back in hell. Afterwards, as he reunite with death he expresses his feelings how he has missed her, and is glad to see her again after all these years, then he kneels down in front of her and begs to give him another chance. However, death has already used up all the bullets allotted to him, but since he begins to apologize and wants to continue living as himself, death takes out a special bullet but it only depends if the guns ends up firing it, and hands over the gun to him. Scared by his fate, Choi fearfully pulls the trigger, and we see his phone ringing. Choi picks up the call and answers his mother. Now we have learned a lesson. Never commit suicide just because life is a little hard on you. Think about your beloved ones. Let me know your thoughts on this drama in the comments section and like the video.